Howdy friends, welcome again to the chef and the grape.com. I am your host, Chef Christoph, and today I wanted to talk to you about Chardonnay and Merlot. I wanted to talk about a uh, very special winery. I wanted to talk about Burring Owl, which is just south of Oliver in the Okanagan Valley, British Columbia. Now, there are a lot of reasons why this is a special winery. One could talk about their accolades. Uh, of, of which they have such a number that I don't even dare get into it. Uh, it. It would be far too long of a conversation piece. I could talk about their um, initiatives with solar power, which are formidable. They will be one of the only businesses in the entire province which will be carbon neutral within just a few years. Um, Let's be honest, that's actually quite an accomplishment for a business anywhere in the world today. Um, and in the field of uh, winemaking, it's a very, very, very uh, small number who, who are even getting close to that. So bravo, well done on that. But then I think really, if there is something to say to give some praise to Burrowing Owl, it must be in their name choice. Um, for those of you who don't know the story, the husband and wife who founded Burrowing Owl um, saw an article in a newspaper and it was talking about the Burrowing Owls, which um, have a huge migration and part of the area they migrate through is the Okanagan Valley. And they're a very unique animal, very unique. Um, anyways, these birds were considered extinct and the article was lamenting it and talking about the work of a few people who were trying to uh, trying to change that. Um, anyways, so the husband and wife uh, were really touched by it, and they reached out to the, I believe it was the Stanley Park Zoo, and said, "How can we help?" And the zoo said, "We need money." And so the the couple said, "Well, we just started this winery. Uh, whoever comes in for a visit, we'll charge them a fee and we'll give it directly to you." How about that? And the zoo thought, well, that's great. Uh, little did they know that uh, 20 years later it would have turned into $3 million of donations. So formidable, absolutely formidable what they've done and what they continue to do to, uh, to pay some, some respect to their namesake, Burrowing Owls. You can actually see them there too now. So let's talk first about the Chardonnay, which it's a very catchy uh, looking bottle, uh, very classy. If you take a look at it in the glass, um, beautiful golden hue, light silver highlights, uh, bursting with life and on the nose. And this is the 2014 vintage, by the way, so just over two years old now. The oaking is apparent, and yet, uh, for those of us who actually like oak in our Chardonnay, it's absolutely gorgeous the way they've done it. Because it's, um, it's restrained, to my mind. I've certainly seen much heavier use of oak than this. Um, and it's balanced. It just seems appropriate for the style of winemaking. There's orchard fruit, apples, pears, quince. Hints of spice, uh, spice tones like um, allspice almost. Beautiful. On the palate. Oh, that's bursting with life. Bright, brisk, vibrant, full acid that just, it's not going to rip the, t the enamel off your teeth, but it is just so zippy. Um, lemon, lemon zest, white grapefruit. Um, yeah, gorgeous. Makes me want to pair it immediately. I'm thinking I want to serve this with some fattier fish. And you know, if I wasn't gonna, gonna go with something like a salmon, I would love to serve this with something like sable fish. Absolutely gorgeous. Uh, if you don't know what sable fish is, I'm so sorry for you. It's a delight. If I lived in a mountain region um, or in the central plains, I would say trout. Um, trout or pickerel or uh, pike. I know how to debone a pike. Um, pike just in a pan with a little bit of butter. Delightful. Full concentration of flavors. Very youthful. This is, this is just coming into its own and 
personally, I believe this actually develops well with a couple more years of age. An absolutely gorgeous wine to drink right now, but hold on to it for a year or two. So that means you have to buy more than one bottle. And, uh, and you'll see, you'll see every year for the next couple of years, it will really grow into itself, come into its own. Uh, great balance, great structure. So for $25, I think this is a steal. This is a 91 point Chardonnay, in my opinion. Uh, humbly, that's the score that I'm submitting. And I think you would be very hard pressed. I would be very hard pressed to find this quality of Chardonnay from anywhere else in the world for this kind of price. But let's move on to the Merlot. And so moving on to the Merlot. Wow. The smell, the bouquet is just stunning. You take a look at it in the glass and this is the 13 vintage. So current release, this is a three year old Merlot, which really we don't see in a lot of markets. Quite often this would happen if we're looking at a Merlot from Saint-Emilion or, or uh, something like that. But once again, a uh, three-year-old Merlot from saint Emilion means it's of a certain class. It's not uh, a generic wine. It's not a table wine. It's uh, a cut above. And this certainly fits into that category. So a light amount of bricking to the rim, but it really is light. Great concentration. And um, on the nose, one of the things I love about this wine, and it's there vintage after vintage, it's site specific, it's because of the terroir, is because our, it, it, it's the, the, the sense of like muskiness. There's a, a primal sort of, um, not quite funky, but it's, it's musky. I don't know how else to say it. It's, uh, um, you know, a touch of, of incense, a touch, a touch of sandalwood, a touch of, uh, of leather, of, of red meat, of wild meat, like uh, venison or something like that. Absolutely gorgeous. Of course, you get the berry tones as well. It's Merlot. It wouldn't be a proper Merlot without it. There's uh, red raspberries, blackberries, um, uh, currants. Just an absolute delight. And then on the palate, <sighs> great wine, bright, vibrant, as a mentor of mine says, it tastes like more, uh, which of course is what, uh, what we're always looking for. The wine should always taste like more, meaning you have a taste, it's got that brightness, that liveliness to it, so even if it's got huge concentration, the palate's not weighed down, and we actually want to have another sip, another glass, another bottle. Um, so medium plus to full acid, really running along that young raspberry sort of tone. Uh, the tannin structure is medium plus. Medium plus and then some. It's got some heft to it, it's got some chew to it, but very well integrated for being such a young wine. But to me, this is indicative that this, ain't, this wine actually ages quite well. The brightness is of acidity, the fullness of the tannin structure, the fullness of the concentration of flavors, and the flavors match the nose brilliantly. Uh, balance, structure, concentration, it's a delightful wine. Easily a 91 point Merlot, easily. Um, and for $30 Canadian, fantastic value. In fact, um, yes, fantastic value. Um, so once again, these are the Burrowing Owl Chardonnay and Merlot. I hope you look for these in your local market and I hope that you enjoy them as much as I.